Hello everyone, uh, I'm Nino Kvetadze, pianist and the artistic director of Delft Chamber Music Festival. Um, this year the festival will take place from 22nd of July till 1st of August and my colleague violinist Lisa Fershman uh, will take care of the first week and I will then take over and lead the second week of the festival. Uh, we'll be introducing to you our musicians and today I'm very happy and very honored uh, to be joined with two wonderful, well first of all two dear friends and wonderful musicians and colleagues. Um, cellist Maya Bogdanovic here in Amsterdam and directly from Spain, Madrid, Frederica Saez, wonderful violinist. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hola. Hola. Um, well, the reason why three of us are together is not only that you both come this summer to play in Delft, but also because we play in a trio. And I think it's interesting to exchange ideas together and uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. I have questions for you ready <laughs> and they are actually around the theme of the festivals and uh, around the uh, theme of the concerts. So, shall we? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, the first question is about um, first steps in music. Um, how yeah. are they for you? Maybe so, my, my first steps were actually a real uh, petit pas in ballet because I started to uh, dance when I was four, but I really wanted to play uh, an instrument and they introduced me to cello. And at the age of uh, five, I started with uh, singing lessons and then cello at six, and that was, that was it <laughs> for me. I really loved the sound and uh, fell in love with this instrument and uh, it, was, it became my life. So there's no other way that it could have been something I else. I don't think so. <laughs> that was it, really. Was it the same for you, Frederica, or? Yeah, it was more or less the same. So my parents, they both played an instrument. My father, the piano, and my mother, the flute. So I did hear them play also together in the house. And sometimes they also listened to music, for example, Brandenburg concertos by, by Bach. So this I remember, and then I don't know exactly where I heard the violin for the first time. It must have been at school, I think. But my parents told me when I was four that already it was very clear about the fact that I wanted to learn how to play the violin. And they were a little bit surprised about it. So they told me, okay, just wait a little bit, go play outside with your friends and see if you want, still want it in, in a few years. So I remember feeling very impatient. So that when I was six, I started with some general music course, you know, that this rise in toilet rolls and you need to shake a rhythm or something like that. I d but I just felt this uh, huge impatience. And then when I was uh, seven, I finally uh, started um, with Suzuki method violin. And then we still had to wait six weeks, I remember, because first the parents got uh, violin uh, lessons to be able to help the children. And then uh, I think I was almost eight when I finally had my first uh, violin lesson. And somehow this feeling of impatience a little bit and this magnetic attraction of the violin has never changed since the, the first day I, I went to play. And the funny detail is that uh, my, my grandfather, whom I never knew, he, he died even, it's my father's father, he died even before my mother got to know my father, but he played the violin. So ah. when I was a bit older, I, I uh, played on this instrument as well. So somehow it must have been the desire passed through, you know, in, in the genes. <laughs> for the, for some reason, so it's, it wasn't without a reason that you actually was so... Excited. Yeah, it must be something in the, yeah, in the family, yes. Fantastic. Yes, and um, yeah, when we grow up, there are some things that we have to dare to do for the first time, yes? Or maybe <laughs> when we get older. So what was the most daring thing that you did in your life, I would say. Frederica? Uh, well, 
it's, um, I think one of the most daring things I ever did in my life was actually turning the pages at the Delft Chamber Music Festival. Ah. I was, uh, I think in my, I don't know, it must have been 20 years ago or even more when Isabelle van Keulen still was uh, the um, artistic director. And um, I remember being so incredibly nervous. I actually offered myself to turn pages because I wanted to be close to the musicians and learn from them, etc. But I, I really, I remember one pianist asked me to, you know, put my hair up because it was touching her, her arms when um, I would turn the pages. Or another pianist asked, "Which perfume are you wearing?" <laughs> Things like this. And um, also another pianist, when I was dreaming away a little bit, started to. Move it. You have to turn the pages. <laughs> so I, I don't know. It was um, um, I, I enjoyed it on one hand, but I, I was more scared than play a concert myself. Uh, so yeah, that uh, is one uh, of the. Uh, I'm not as very bright. I need some bravery. <laughs> <laughs> so, lots of respect to all page turners. <laughs> and, yeah. Oh yeah, I guess it wasn't uh, turning pages. No, was it actually, I, I, I'm, first thing that comes to my mind um, is that when I left my hometown, Belgrade, at the age of 16 to go to Paris, to totally unknown uh, town, uh, unknown place, unknown people, unknown language, and um, yes, I, I think it's quite uh, daring for a kid of 16 to, and now being mother myself, I can't imagine my daughter at 16 leaving somewhere else to study, but that was the only, only possibility for me to grow artistically and only chance to leave um, Belgrade at that time was not in the best place. Now I go back all the time, every year, um, several times, and I enjoy very much and uh, what is going on there. But in 99, unfortunately, Belgrade was not uh, the best place for me to grow artistically. So uh, I had to leave to Paris, to this beautiful city of lights and uh, where I grew up musically. And I think that was uh, maybe the most daring thing yeah, <laughs> for and me can, and my parents, actually. And I can imagine it of course it was very there but in a way also quite inspiring because you also yeah, discover yes. lots of new things and also yeah. yourself maybe and i think we also met uh, thanks to that so i met yeah. frederick in france and then uh, thanks to frederick we met and formed this beautiful trio that exists for more than 10 years exactly now. yes yeah and, we, well, and then you met your husband yeah <laughs> and then you met your partner yeah. <laughs> and uh, Speaking, uh, speaking of uh, you leaving Belgrade, actually, my it just my next question is the events that influenced you the most in your life. It can be uh, anything. What what would it be in the world generally, or it can be also something very personal. Was it was it actually the fact that you were leaving your country, or was it something else? Uh, yes, definitely, that was a huge influence on me because I discovered a completely other world, um, other type of um, playing together, other type of education, and which I appreciate uh, very much. I also loved the uh, type of education in, in Serbia because we had this specialized music school, uh, which are quite rare in uh, Western Europe. Um, but it was quite uh, concentrated, we would have lessons uh, all the time, uh, four times a week, cello lessons and solfege and uh, analysis and everything. And uh, then you come to some other grown-up world uh, where you have to yeah, fight. Uh, to uh, There is lots of great artists, great people, and you really need to keep up and, uh, and progress very fast and uh, learn. And uh, Paris could offer all of that. And uh, yeah, that was uh, quite life-changing. <laughs> And what about you, Frederica? What was was there a, any big event in the world, maybe, that really influenced you as a person or a, as a musician? Um, well, many things. Uh, well, first of all, growing up, of course, in a family, a large family with eight children, uh, one of uh, whom has uh, special needs as well. So uh, I had to learn from a young age to deal with living with many different personalities in, in, a, in one house, which taught me a lot. Um, meeting uh, Mauricio Fuchs, I think the professor uh, who invited me to go to the United States. So I was 
older than Maya. I was 25, uh, so already in another stage of life, I guess, when I went there. But still, it was a new world. I mean, a totally uh, different experience, which expanded my horizon musically and, and personally as well. And then I think the biggest change was uh, motherhood. I mean, you're both mothers as well. It changed my perspective on everything uh, life has to offer, really, and priorities as well. And well, of course, now the pandemic, which has hit all of us hard, uh, musicians, especially the freelance musicians, I think that's also a life-changing event, makes you realize the things that seem normal, which are actually not that, um, uh, you cannot take things for granted at all. I mean, so that's, if one thing, it has made me more grateful for the things that we were able, still able to do. And uh, also how special it is to make music with, uh, for people um, and to be able to sit hopefully soon with you on one table live in person again so yes all of those things together i think uh, has ha have had big influences on my life so far yeah in a way i was thinking because i'm um, going to the next question i was thinking we all come so maya comes from serbia and now lives in amsterdam used to live in paris Frederica comes from the netherlands now she's in spain i come from georgia and live in amsterdam we are all in a way, wanderers, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So, but uh, we are in between the countries and in, in between the places. Yeah. What is a perfect place for you? Where, where, where is this perfect home? Or where do you feel that that's where you should be? Um, well, it's a very double question in a way. So if there's one place I, I could choose, where I could be really every day and feel entirely happy is on a beach somewhere. So, uh, well, I grew up in, in The Hague, very close to the beach. And because we had a large family, we never went on holiday or to another country. Um, so we went to the beach close to The Hague, which is called Stillestand, the silent beach. And here in Asturias, where I live at the moment, there are so many, many beautiful beaches, very quiet. Uh, Playa del Silencio is one of them, where I can really feel uh, very much at peace. On the other hand, yeah, the place where I feel most at home, I mean, I think it's a great challenge not to wander too much sometimes with the mind when we're playing violin or just really to be in the here and now already is also a beautiful place to, to wander to <laughs> in a way and a challenge also to, to, to be really focused and present where we are now. Uh, so it's the double question. So on one hand, you can dream where I would like to be on the other hand, uh, the most beautiful place to be is always at this moment where we are now. Okay. And for you, Maya? Well, I'm very happy in my hometown, Zem, which is part of Belgrade. I'm very happy in Paris, uh, where I spent 20 years, and very happy in Amsterdam. But I think I find the biggest freedom on the stage with friends and with you girls, and I can't wait for that moment to come. And what is a perfect stage for you? What is a perfect concert? I think it's a mix of uh, things. There is no one hall that I could name. It has to have nice acoustics, but uh, some of most wonderful experiences uh, were unexpected in some unexpected places. I remember very well when we played our first concert together in the mill in the yes. Netherlands. So yeah, that was yeah, one yeah. of really yes. remarkable yeah. experiences. And I think uh, I feel great uh, just surrounded by friends uh, with whom I can share music. And Frederica, for you? Is there any special yeah. goal or any special place you feel you can fly? I think if I, yes, I think if I would have to choose one, it's Concertgebouw. So either one of the two halls, the, one of the most happy memories is playing there with the two of you, basically. Also, yeah, like you say, Maya, to share music with close friends, and also to you know a place where the instrument can fly free um because i noticed with my violin um that it gets wings literally when it's lifted by the acoustics and it feels like you don't need to work at all you just put your bow on the string and kind of the music plays itself so i think in these places like concert this has some magic about it um uh, yeah that would be the one if i would have to choose Yes. 
And uh, of course the concerts and the reason actually why we are here is the Delft Chamber Music Festival. And um, generally, what comes to your mind when you hear Chamber Music Festival? Uh, for me it's a journey. It's a journey between friends, uh, audience and uh, when you look at uh, the program of the festival you actually can see a person's mind. <laughs> so, I was very happy to discover your program and uh, it's beautifully done and I can't wait to play all these pieces uh, mm -hmm. together. And summer is uh, usually the happiest uh, part of the year for us because we go to many festivals, we meet up with some of them and share music and it's always great to, to, to travel actually. And uh, this time, for the first time, we will be at Delft. I'm very much looking forward. Uh, me too, very, very much. And for you, Frederike, music festival, Champion Music Festival, what is it? Yeah, same like Maya says, it's really like a um, true celebration, beautiful music of friendship, of uh, sharing indeed with with each other on the stage with the audience and yeah enjoying all the good sides of life um, a sense of liberty um, I, I don't know if I think of festival I also feel sunshine I mean not only literally but just the whole uh, atmosphere um, mixing getting to know new people catching up with old friends um, yeah it's just what music is about I think um, yeah, really with an emphasis on sharing and uh, joy, just uh, having fun, working hard, but in a way it doesn't feel like working hard because it's our passion, our hobby still in a sense, and yeah. to share that with uh, close people, it's, it's, yeah, I think that's the whole essence of why we are musicians. Yeah, I have to agree because I, as a pianist, I mean, if I'm talking about uh, myself, it's all in a way. It's a lonely instrument because we practice at home. We do quite a lot of big repertoires just for solo piano. And during summer, during summer festivals, that's where I really see my friends and I get to know the people and we get to play together. So I really also, I love the summer festivals and especially <laughs> now. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to Delft and yes, uh, and I'm very happy that you can join and. Um, of course, the theme, I mean, all these questions were around the <coughs> themes of the concert, but the main theme of the festival is Brave New World. In a way, we are all in the new world and we I'm are learning. <laughs> we are being try, trying to be brave and trying to learn things uh, in, in a new way. And what does it mean to you? new world. Well, I words. think uh, this um, year taught us to be even more creative, although we are, <laughs> we belong to creative uh, um, branch and uh, we create uh, with our music, we had to even push our limits and uh, go further and uh, invent uh, how to reach out, how to be connected with uh, our audience and uh, which resulted with uh, lots of online concerts and uh, lots of creative uh, ways to to reach the audience so i think that's something that we should uh, keep and maybe in a way we became uh, even more connected than before and it's great that somebody who is in the netherlands can come to the concert but also that somebody who is at the other end of the world can just hear the concert and uh, get to know us and uh, enjoy from their living rooms so i think uh, Anyone who works in culture sector and who is creating things and uh, making things possible is really brave. So I think we should, so too, yeah. we should really keep that <laughs> live music going yeah. on and concerts. Yeah, definitely. And for you, Frederica, the new world is it brave? Yes, yeah, same, same <laughs> like I well, I think it always takes some bravery to to explore you know general new worlds, but even you can discover new worlds and pieces that you've played already a million of times. I think it's always our duty and our, how to say, quest to keep searching for, for new worlds, new layers, new perspectives in, 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 in the music itself. So in new music that's created today, of course, contemporary music, which offers of, often new worlds and sense of types of sounds that, that are unfamiliar. But also it works that we've already played lots of times to always keep exploring and never to become, um, how to say, I, I think we all share that actually as musicians, that you always have the sense to come closer to the essence or of the meaning of the music. And in that sense, I think Brave New World represents our, 
our eternal search for the utmost perfection or beauty, which we'll probably never reach, but no, just to yeah. continue exploring, like Maya says, new ways of connecting to people, especially in these times, but also within the music itself. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's really so interesting to listen to because we we do spend time together when, when we are playing, of course, and we are all the time in touch. But these are things that it's very interesting to discuss with both of you. And uh, there is a bonus. <laughs> yes, we are to yes ask you as, as I promised, <laughs> you can also ask me one question, each of you, and I'll be happy to I also ask share. Two. Uh, yes, then I get two, <laughs> one, one from each. <laughs> so, so, Fetcher, is there anything you would like to know? Yes, yeah, so what is the bravest thing that you have ever done, you know? Oof. <laughs> um, I, 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 all, I, I never think of myself as a brave person, but there are little steps that I dare to do, like, uh, uh, like exactly like Maya said, going to study somewhere else. The first trip that I've ever did when I was 16, I went to the United States for, for the longer period, then moving to the Netherlands to study. Um, yeah, having a family, also creating this program for... Uh, the uh, Delft Chamber Music Festival. They are just. Uh, I don't think they are very brave, but I. For me, it's 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 um, just small steps towards the bravery. I would say, but yeah, I think that's that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, and I would like to know. Um, uh, audience knows you as a beautiful, wonderful pianist, and they enjoy your concerts. But I would like to know about your off-stage talents. <laughs> Superpower. Oh, Superpower. <laughs> Do I have any? Yes, many. <laughs> I I don't know if. I... <laughs> well, I don't know if I have any superpowers but at least uh, i'm very proud of having uh, my friends around me and my family and i think that that's a great power when you can be connected and you can have people around you that you can really trust and lean on i think i think i would just say this for the rest okay. of the super <laughs> i think two of you are really no, no. being a mother powerful. and uh, being such a wonderful musician is, uh, Quite a superpower. Yeah, and yeah. don't forget your sushi skills. You know, you're a great <laughs> sushi maker. Pastry. That's right, right? Yeah. And pastry? Yes. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, both thank of you. you. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you. And we wait for you and we'll host you in Delft this summer. So, um, till then. Very much looking forward <laughs> to that. <laughs> it's very much looking forward, you know. And, uh, Yes, finally, it will be such a treat, really. So much looking forward to celebrate the nearing end of the pandemic, hopefully, in this way with you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> 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 See you soon, ladies. Bye bye.